everybody, welcome to a new video that I am going to be making and it is the day in the life of a stop motion maker and in this video I just want to demonstrate my routines, how I go about making stop motions and any information that could be helpful to stop motion makers in the future and present. So first up is track setup. You got your grandstands, you got your racetrack. I uh, just want to make sure everything is laid out perfectly and the way you want it. Track setup is key. Get it in a nice spot that fits in your room. See, I got room to be on the ground. I, as you can tell, I do not use tables. I, I've never liked to use tables. I've always been working on the ground. Um, my knees are fine. They hurt every once in a while, but that's when I know to take a break. You just get up, lay down, relax, walk a little bit, make sure your knees are okay. You can always use pillows, there's knee pads you can buy, stuff like that. But I work from the ground, so if you're working from the ground, this is how I do it. If you have a nice table, awesome, cool. You like setting it up that way, that is great because table stop motions are probably the best way to make stop motions. But for me, I am unfamiliar with that setup. My tripod is a small tripod, so from the ground has always worked for me. I always think I get the best angles from the ground. I don't know. That's just the way I set up. So, like I said, you want to make sure your track set up. Uh, make sure your track is looking nice. I made a video on how to make one of these racetracks. Uh, I made Nazareth, and I made that video. It's on YouTube. I can link it in the description for any of you. To, so this is kind of like how I made Nazareth. I made Kalamazoo Speedway this way. And this is a um, renovation of Kalamazoo Speedway. Bringing the track back to the ACS. And I'm pleased the way it turned out. So I believe the best way in my opinion, to make a stop motion is with um, some company. And usually my company is Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, or just uh, regular TV such as a football game, hockey game, NASCAR race. To make stop motion, you need to keep yourself company, uh, you need to keep yourself focused, and I believe watching something, so I'm currently watching Dexter, and it's a seventh season uh, series, so that's a while, it's a lot of uh, TV to watch. So. You just kind of keep up with that, watch something while you make stop motions, and that's just kind of my ritual in a way. Another frequently asked question is how I make my starting lineups. And for those of you who are curious, no, I do not randomly generate them. Because sometimes when you do that, you get people like Michael McDowell, Ty Dillon, David Reagan starting on the pole. And to me, um, I, I can't get down with that. You know, I, I can't have them just randomly start in the pole and then do poorly in the race. It doesn't make sense. You're going to be fast. You're going to be fast. You're going to be up front. You know, you got your comers and goers, of course. But usually, I try and put the winner of a race inside the top 15. That's usually my consensus. So if you're outside the top 15, you may be out of luck. And a thing I like to do as well, if you got a nice looking paint scheme... Uh, you're going to be starting up front, most likely, in my stop motions. And also, with I, I take into consideration of my history of starting positions when I make racetracks. Bryce Harvey, he has, I believe, in the history, he has a first place and then a runner-up finish. So, of course, he's going to be starting up front. He's fast. He's in the flash paint scheme. He's ready to go. So, I got him starting on the pole because he hasn't had the best season. Not saying he's going to win this race, but... He's starting up front, going to make some noise. And then Alex Bowman, he's in the top three in points currently. He's going to be starting up front. Kyle Busch, always a threat. Chase Elliott, top five in points. Denny Hamlin won the first race of the season in season nine. So, of course, you got your strong runners. Martin Truex Jr. up front. Kevin Harvick starting in the top 15. So you got to have your strong running race cars up front, I believe. And then, then you can have some fun. Say, hey, put Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the top three. Uh, Ty, or, Ty Dillon. Austin Dillon starting in the top ten. Of course, you want to have some good runs for some drivers. And then drivers you put in the back so they work their way forward. Camden Luca, he's doing good in my series so far. He always makes his way to the front. Jimmy Johnson, top three in points. He's going to make his way to the front for sure. So you want to have some something to work with when you're making your stop motion. So always take that into consideration if you um, manually generate your starting lineup. All right, now that you got the starting lineup laid out onto the racetrack, pre-race ceremonies are starting to begin. 
And how I go about making my stop motions is I make the pre-race ceremonies short and sweet. Because from what I've learned and gathered from data from YouTube is that people usually skip the pre-race ceremonies. Which is unfortunate because I usually talk about what's going to happen, who's got the best cars. And people will skip that, which is unfortunate, but it's something you got to live with. And so how I do it is I just take a simple video. You usually see something like this at the beginning of the race and whatnot. And then um, I immediately just go get the cars rolling off, you know. The cars start rolling off the grid. And we get right into the starting lineup. And I usually pick a good spot on the racetrack. Probably I'm going to use the logo for the starting lineup. So you got your um, inside, outside, row one. Oh no, I mixed that up. Sorry. Inside, outside of row one. And I'll have the camera pointed like this. And of course, you got to move all the race cars out of the way. But I'll zoom in on it. And then just imagine these cars below here are gone. And these two will be row one, inside, outside. And I just do that for all the cars. Row two, row three, row four, and whatnot. And then I get right into the stop motion. I usually do uh, pre-race ceremonies when it comes to editing. That's where most of the pre-race ceremony stuff is. I just like to get right into the stop motion. I, I, get, I skip through all the um, busy work, which pre-race ceremonies would be. And if more people watched them, I put more into the pre-race ceremonies like National Anthem, Hollywood Hotel. But from my experience, people generally do not watch your pre-race ceremonies. So to save yourself some time, I would usually just skip that. But trust me, some of your stop motion uh, makers out there, um, which I'll get into in later videos, uh, you do great pre-race ceremonies with like Lego people in the booth, which is very creative and I love it. I just wish more people would. And that's not a knock on anybody. It's just how it is. People skip it and get right to the action. All right, the cars have taken the green flag. We are green flag racing here. Say Bryce Harvey took off with the lead. You got Alex Bowman in second. Here comes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on the inside. Of course, Kyle Busch, he's going to make it uh, a work for you. He's going to make it three wide down the back stretch. Now, this is how I have moved my cars. A lot of people ask me. And I generally try to do um, Goodyear to the front. The Goodyear logo. See it down there on the bottom. I usually try and make it so it's on top. Or just wherever it was. And of course, if you're trying to make a car pass another, you have to move that car a little further. So you see Alex Bowman, he's getting passed by Ricky Stenhouse and Kyle Busch. So you got to move them to further down the line. And a good way to measure that is, is to measure where Stenhouse's nose is on Bowman's body. So let's move Bowman again. You see Bowman, what Stenhouse was by in the middle of the eights. And now let's put him more towards the front of the eights. Getting closer to passing Bowman. Move Bowman again. And you, you can also move Bowman slower. Maybe he didn't get the good launch off the corner. So move the tire length slower. You can see Stenhouse and Bush slowly start to overtake Bowman. Take a picture. Like that. Take a picture. So this is how I move my cars in my stop motions. And people ask me how I get my laps done so much. Is I don't think I move the cars too much. I honestly don't. I mean, I think this is fine. It all turns out fine in the end. But it's just it's just all about getting in a rhythm. And you got Kyle Busch slowly overtaking Senhouse as well. Because he got the good run off the corner. So that's how I move my cars in my stop motions. For those of you who have been wondering about that. And if you have any more questions still, please ask them in the comments and I would love to make another video and show you more detail. But this is how I generally move my cars. Um, so once again, Goodyear Eagle. Maybe, yeah, try moving them in thirds because that's probably generally how I do it. Boom. But just watch the Goodyear Eagle logo. And it's all about how you want to make your stop motions as well. How you find the smoothness and the good transitions in between clips is up to you. And now, a tough thing is moving the cars and the camera at the same time can be difficult. Because 
that can become sloppy work. And trust me, I've had my own shares of sloppy work when it comes to trying to move the cars and the camera at the same time. But usually, uh, your camera will have a box in the center of the picture. And make one of the cars the center of the picture and just make sure that box stays on the car you're targeting the entire time and it should turn out smoothly. That's my advice. I'm still not very good at it. Um, and if you have, once again, if you have further questions, please leave it in the comments. All right, now let's say you have finished your race. You are ready to do the burnout. And I go through this every time I do a burnout. I think it's long enough, and then I edit it, and it's only like three seconds long. Burnouts are a lot of work. I have generally just accepted that I suck at burnouts, so I just do them about three to five seconds long each time. Because they are a lot of work, you're at the end of the stop motion, you're done, you just want to be done, and you just want to throw it all together, put it on YouTube, and let people enjoy it. So I generally just try to make the burnouts short and sweet. I'll have a car, let's say Austin Dillon wins this race, because we know he won't. Um, just does some burnouts, just like that. Uh, sometimes I have them come down, do a burnout, like start on a track, spin into the grass, or you can just have them like do a Denny Hamlin style burnout where he burns out in front of the crowd throughout the whole front stretch. And then say if Joey Logano wins, you do his burnout where he goes... <laughs> Joey Logano has a nice burnout. Truex is something similar to Logano's burnout. Yeah, so if, if you have a, dri a popular driver that wins and they have a certain style burnout, definitely try and recreate that because recreating Joey Logano's burnouts is fun, Truex burnouts is fun. It's all about who wins. Um, I wish I, I would invest money and find a Kyle Busch Lego man so I could have him do a bow if Kyle Busch ever wins a race. Um, I remember when Carl Edwards won a race one time, I had a Lego man do a backflip off the car. It didn't turn out that great, but, you know, it's something that you try and do um, and have fun with. So, burnouts, they can be a lot of work, but they can also be fun if you're into them and if you still have energy to keep creating. So, that's really it for me. Honestly, that's what goes into a stop motion for me. I just put on a TV show or a YouTube video or just watch TV, and I get creating. Uh, one thing that you got to remember when you're making stop motions is just be creative. Use cotton balls for your smoke. Um, have cars pass each other. Uh, don't make it a normal NASCAR race because if you're ever on Twitter, people complain about normal NASCAR races because there's so many commercials and they get really strung out at times. And just remember, your race is short, so drivers are going to be extra aggressive. They're not going to be... Uh, content with riding in third place on lap five. They're going to want to try and get to the front because they only got six laps left. Or how many laps you do your race. Just they're shorter than a normal NASCAR race. So, of course, these cars are going to be more aggressive and wrecks are going to happen. That's always been my insight on making races is that the drivers have a different mentality than normal NASCAR races. you got to make them fun. you got to make them exciting. Uh, fans are here to be entertained, not to just watch cars ride single file and don't get me wrong if you do long seasons like me of course it's okay to have a race where the drivers uh, get strung out and one guy dominates but usually fans usually I mean they're all hit and miss everyone's got different tastes but usually they are thrilled by a last lap pass or a pass with two to go and trust me from my experience don't make it a photo finish every time because fans also don't like that um, because usually I get into the habit sometimes of making good creative photo finishes and sometimes they're not, they don't turn out the best um, reaction wise. They're like, oh, another photo finish, you know. It's just the way, it's just some things you have to deal with when you're, you are a uh, stop motion creator. So ho I hope everybody got something out of this video. Uh, they saw how I move my cars and that's really generally how I do it. Uh, you just got to make sure if someone's passing them, they're passing them. They're not... They're not, you know, strong one one clip, going far one clip, then going short, then going strong, then going short. If you want, oh, you know, it wasn't even the camera, was it? Uh, you make sure they want to go strong, 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 strong if they're passing someone, not strong, 
uh, short clip, short clip, strong, short clip, short clip. And trust me, don't move them that far is what I was doing. But what I'm saying is just make it consistent. If they're passing someone, they're passing someone. They're not, they're not, they're not getting off the gas pedal. You know what I mean? They, they are full throttle trying to get by somebody and possibly use them up in the corner by the time they get there. Uh, it's up to you. Just be creative, everybody. Just remember that. You don't have to make it like a real NASCAR race. Of course, I have fictional race car drivers in my series, like my little brother. He's in the 99. I got friends in the back that start there. And from my experience, again, your custom drivers, you like your friends, of course, put them in the race, but um, definitely don't make your customs win a lot of races because people tend to get irritated about that, but you can make them do well. I mean, but by all means, it's everybody's race. I mean, you don't have to take my advice. You do you. If it's working for you, of course, go for it. But this is just some some things I deal with on a daily routine when I'm making stop motions. And I got some more advice. When you are making a race and it's 10 laps, that can be awfully daunting when you're on lap one. Uh, but just make schedules for yourself. Say, hey, if I can do two laps each day a week, I'm done by Friday if you start Monday. So two laps a day gets you done by Friday. Just keep yourself motivated. Tell yourself, oh, but I'm feeling it right now, so I'm going to do another lap and get that done with. Then you got three laps done in one day. Or you got four. Or if you have no life like me, you'll do six laps in one day. So, I mean, just do what you like. Find a rhythm. Find a game plan. Set yourself up. Say, I got two laps a day in a ten-lap race. Edit Friday night, upload Saturday, just like that. And of course, I know life can get busy. You got stuff to do on a certain day, but just say, say, hey, I got something to do Wednesday. I'll do three laps on Tuesday and three laps on Thursday to make up for Wednesday. Whatever you do, just find yourself a good game plan, set yourself up, and be ready to create because stop motions are fun when they are done right and you got lots of viewership because it's a whole community that you get to show the, off your content to. And trust me, I will try and help the best I can to promote this community because I love stop motions and I wish I could make them forever obviously that is not an option but I will make them until I cannot that's all I'll say on that topic so I hope everybody enjoyed this video got something out of it and I hope you can create amazing races for the future and for myself so I can view them as well and look at how good this community is thriving Thanks everybody for watching. This is JG24, JG6.